Good morning, everyone. Uh, so my name is Scott Oakley. I'm the technical manager at GlassCorp. In this presentation, we'll be taking a closer look at some of the common construction and glazing tapes that we supply, the different applications where these can be used, and some application guidelines to follow to help you achieve the best results. Okay, just a quick overview on what we will be covering today. Uh, we'll start off with an introduction to pressure sensitive adhesives, the technology that is utilized by many glazing and construction tapes. We'll then look at some of the considerations you should make when selecting a pressure sensitive adhesive tape. We'll look at some of the different applications where tapes are used and some of the products in the Glass Corp offering. And finally, we'll cover some standard guidelines to follow when it comes to tape application to help you achieve quality results. Firstly, let's talk about the technology of pressure sensitive adhesives and how they work. Now, what are pressure sensitive adhesives? Simply put, they are a type of non-reactive adhesive which forms a bond when pressure is applied to bond the adhesive to a surface. They do not require a solvent, water, or heat to activate the adhesive. Pressure sensitive adhesives exhibit a property known as viscoelasticity, being thick and tacky in consistency while also being elastic or being able to withstand stress and return to the original shape. Pressure sensitive adhesives have an endless number of applications and are used in many different industries from construction, glazing, electronics, manufacturing, packaging, signage, aviation, healthcare, and more. Pressure sensitive adhesive tapes are typically comprised of three basic components. The backing or carrier material is the part of the tape that the adhesive gets coated to. There are many different materials this could be made of depending on the application for which the tape is designed. Examples include paper, plastic film, cloth, foam, or foil. The backing or carrier material will be coated with a pressure sensitive adhesive, which again will vary depending on the type of application and environment the tape is designed for. Examples of adhesives include acrylic, epoxies, rubber based adhesives, and silicon adhesives. Finally, many pressure sensitive tapes will have a release liner, so an additional layer which can be removed, which prevents the tape from sticking to itself. Single-sided tapes allow for bonding to a surface or the joining of two adjacent or overlapping materials. Double-sided tapes, which have adhesive on both sides, allow for the joining of two items back to back. There are three common adhesive chemistries that are used in pressure-sensitive adhesive tapes. I'll explain a few of the differences and benefits of each. The most common adhesive technology that is used are adhesives based on natural or synthetic rubbers. Rubber adhesives are very economical, they're very high tech, and they're often easily and cleanly removable. A few disadvantages to rubber based adhesives are that they have low resistance to environmental conditions such as UV and high temperatures, as well as poor chemical resistance. Adhesives formulated with acrylic polymers are the other common adhesive chemistry that is used in pressure sensitive tapes. These are versatile, able to bond to a wide variety of different materials and are available in the widest variety of formats. Finally, we have adhesives based on silicone polymers. Silicone is known for having excellent high temperature resistance as well as strong resistance to UV and chemical exposure. Silicon adhesives are better at adhering to low surface energy materials and are the only adhesives that can adhere to silicon. Being a specialized product used in extreme environments, they are a higher cost than the other two options. They are also relatively low strength compared to other adhesive types. Let's talk about some of the advantages of using pressure sensitive tapes. Firstly, tapes allow for easy application, which can be automated for certain applications. Adhesion is achieved quickly and is not reliant on long curing times. 
In some applications, tapes can eliminate the need for mechanical fixings and disperse the associated concentrated stresses across the bonding area. Tapes can provide vibration dampening and noise reduction. Tapes provide uniform thickness and gap filling properties, which can be difficult to achieve with liquid applied sealants. Now that I've talked about the technology behind and, and some of the benefits of pressure sensitive adhesive tapes, note that moving forward, whenever I refer to tapes, these are what I'm referring to. In this next section, we'll cover some of the considerations you should make when selecting a suitable pressure sensitive adhesive tape. The first consideration to make when selecting tape for your application is what material or substrate are we trying to adhere to? You will need to consider the surface texture and roughness of the material. Pressure sensitive tapes will generally adhere better to smoother substrates than rough or textured ones. Rough or textured surfaces may require tape with a thicker carrier and more adhesive mass to properly wet out any voids on the substrate. This is illustrated in this graphic. Applying a thin tape to a rough surface here, there is insufficient adhesive to fully wet out the voids and crevices on the surface, leaving air pockets and potential weak points which could cause failure of the tape. Replacing this with a tape with a thicker adhesive mass allows for complete wet out and adhesion to the rough surface. Certain porous substrates may need to be sealed or primed first to allow for effective tape bonding. When we're talking about adhesion, an important material property that you'll often see mentioned is surface energy. It's helpful to have an understanding of this when selecting a suitable tape for a particular material. The surface energy of a material determines how well an adhesive will wet out over the surface. Wet out describes how a liquid flows or spreads out when applied to the surface of solid. Good wet out is required to form an adhesive bond. Low surface energy materials do not allow adhesives to wet out, making it more difficult for adhesive to adhere. High surface energy substrates allow for more adhesive wet out, making it easier for adhesives to bond to. The photos shown here are taken from a car before and after being washed and waxed. The before photo is shown on the right. Here we have an example of a high surface energy surface. Water spreads out evenly over the car body. On the left, we have a photo of the car body after it has been washed and waxed. We have reduced the surface energy. Water droplets speed up and run off the surface, making it more difficult for dust and dirt to settle. The relative surface energy for many common materials is already well known. Metals typically exhibit high surface energies and are more often easier to adhere to. In the middle range, we have some other common building substrates like timber, concrete, and glass. On the other end of the scale, certain engineered plastic materials are known to have low surface energy and can be notoriously difficult to adhere to. These materials, uh, some examples of these materials include Teflon, polypropylene, and polyethylene. Next, consider what conditions the tape will be exposed to during application. A large variety of pressure sensitive adhesive tapes are available to cater to different conditions they may be installed in or exposed to in operation. Consider factors such as exposure to UV, weathering, extreme temperatures, or the potential for the tape to be exposed to solvents or chemicals, as different adhesive technologies, as we've touched on earlier, will have variable resistance to these factors. Finally, when selecting a suitable pressure sensitive tape, consider if the application is a permanent or temporary one. For temporary applications, such as masking or surface protection, how long will the tape be in place before being removed? The tape specifications will often indicate the length of time that the tape can be installed or left exposed for, after which time there is a risk that residue could be left on the material when trying to remove the tape. 
We recommend that confirmatory tests are conducted on the relevant substrate to ensure that the selected tape is suitable for your application. This includes checking that good adhesion can be achieved and that the tape can be removed cleanly if required without staining or damaging the surface finish. In this next section, we will look at a few of the common applications where tapes are used, particularly as it relates to glazing and construction, industries of which we are a key supplier to. Masking tapes are used for many different applications, though they're primarily used to protect or mask off surfaces during painting, which is why you'll often hear them referred to as painter's tape. Masking tapes are designed for temporary use, to be easily removed without leaving residue or damaging the substrate they've been applied to. Masking tapes have traditionally been constructed with a paper backing material, which allows the tape to conform to curved and irregular surfaces, as well as be torn easily by hand for tool-free application. PVC and other plastic film masking tapes are also available and offer additional strength. Suffice to say, we supply a large range of masking tapes. Shown here is a selection of just a few. Generally speaking, our range of masking tapes fall into two categories, uh, paper back tapes and the PVC back tapes. We don't have quite have time to discuss the features and benefits of each individual masking tape as much as I'm sure you'd like me to, but I'll point out a few of the popular options that we supply. Front and center, we have our classic orange tape. This is a PVC tape that's widely used by fabricators very versatile in its applications. To its left, we have our cream colored general purpose masking tape. On the right, we have the gold masking tape, which uses a uh, washi paper backing material. This is a traditional Japanese material known for its high strength and conformability. In addition to the considerations that I detailed in the previous section, there are several other factors that you may consider when selecting a suitable masking tape. These include, do I require tape that's highly visible? Uh, no, their masking tapes are not often uh, so brightly colored by accident. Do I need a tape that I'm able to tear by hand? Or alternatively, do I need a tape that will be resistant to tearing? Do I need a tape that I'll be able to write on? Surface protection tapes and films are used to provide temporary protection to surfaces during manufacturing processes, construction, storage, and transportation. They can be used to protect glazing and glass surfaces, aluminum window frames, and many metal and plastic surfaces. They're designed to protect against paint and plaster over spray and splattering, dirt and dust, and scratches and abrasions. Like masking tapes, they're designed to be easily removed without leaving residue or damaging the substrate they're applied to. We have protection tapes and films to suit your specific requirements. Here on the left, we have three very similar looking black protection films. Let me explain the difference. Firstly, on our left, we have our MTPT economy protection tape, suitable for general protection of powder coated and anodized aluminum joinery, and can be removed cleanly up to six months after application. This is a great low cost general purpose option. Next in line, we have our MTPT Protect Long Life Tape, utilized in the same applications for protecting aluminum joinery with excellent long-term aging characteristics and UV resistance. An important point to mention here is that we have had our MTPT Protect Tape tested and certified to conform with Window and Glass Association requirements for protection tapes on powder coat and anodized aluminum joinery. The third one shown here is our MTPT LSC or low surface energy tape. This tape offers a higher level of initial tack and adhesion, making it ideal for applications on lower surface energy materials. In particular, in our field, we are seeing more and more use of textured powder coats, which are notoriously difficult to adhere to. For these types of coatings, the MTPT LSC tape would be your answer. It has also been tested to Window and Glass Association requirements. On the right here, we have our protection films. These are made from polyethylene and are often used to protect windows, glass doors, and large aluminum panels. The blue 
option is available in 500 millimeter wide reel. The green is available in a few different sizes, ranging from 300 to 1200 mil. High bond tapes. High bond tapes are used for permanent mounting and bonding applications. The high bond tapes that we'll discuss in this section are all double-sided tapes. And sometimes you'll hear them refer to just as double-sided tapes. However, it's important that we make the distinction as just because a tape is double-sided does not necessarily mean that it's suitable for bonding applications. High bond tapes are used in several different glazing and facade applications, including mounting panels to frames as panel stiffeners and to install colonial mountain bars and decorative features. High bond tapes can be used to replace mechanical fasteners or liquid adhesives, allowing for simple application and a clean finish and minimal cleanup. We have clear high bond tapes, which allow for invisible mounting, useful when mounting transparent and translucent substrates. We supply a range of high bond tapes for the product to suit your requirements. Shown here, we have our UHB or ultra high bond tape. We stock this in a few standard sizes and can also provide custom widths. We have our VHB range of high bond tapes, as well as our Munton Colonial and general double-sided mounting tapes. All of these tapes exhibit excellent bonding strength and resistance to UV and aging. We have high bond tapes available in different colors, notably clear, gray, white, and black. Refer to the Glasgow website for detailed information on our range. Butyl tapes are used as a weather seal in various forms of glazing. They are made of butyl rubber, a material with excellent resistance to permeation from air, water, and other gases. It is also known for its resistance to heat, chemicals, and UV. Butyl tapes are extremely durable, offering good adhesion to many common building substrates, including low surface energy ones such as polyethylene building membranes. Butyl tapes are designed for permanent waterproofing, bonding, and fixing. We supply butyl tapes in a range of thicknesses, widths, and lengths. Note that while technically butyl tapes are double-sided, these are not recommended for bonding applications. Foam glazing tapes are pressure-sensitive adhesive tapes made of open or closed cell foam with an adhesive on either one or both sides. Foam tapes are used in structural glazing general window and door glazing, gasketing, and insulating applications. Foam tapes act as excellent insulators, providing impact resistance and cushioning, as well as sound reduction and weather resistance properties. We supply a range of foam tapes for different glazing and mounting applications. These include single-sided foam tapes, available at different density and hardness levels to suit your application. We also have double-sided foam tapes, High density with heavier duty adhesive technology. The VK1826 series mentioned has been developed specifically as a spacer for structural glazing applications. The high density allows it to resist compression from heavy glass units and provide a uniform space for structural silicone to be applied. A secondary function of structural glazing tapes is to aid in holding glass panels in position as the structural silicone cures. Both our single and double-sided foam tapes are comprised of closed cell PVC foam. Common to all products in this range is the ability for the tape to form a long life seal against air, moisture, light, and dust penetration. Closed cell PVC foam completely seals out air, moisture, light, and dust when compressed by 30% or more. Finally, we have our double-sided mirror mounting tape. This is made of a closed cell polyethylene foam coated on both sides with an acrylic adhesive. It is designed to be used in conjunction with an appropriate mirror mounting adhesive, which we also supply. To help you choose the right foam tape for your application, we have a foam tape sample card, which you can order from the Glass Court website. Our foam tapes come in large reels of various thicknesses and lengths. On our website, you will see standard roll sizes that we have available. For everything else, we can cut foam tape down to the specific width that you require with our tape cutting machine at Glass Corp. Expanding foam tape is used for weather sealing applications, often in place of a liquid applied sealant. 
The tape is pre-compressed and expands after being applied to fill an enclosed gap with the foam providing weather sealing properties. We carry the range of Ilmot 600 expanding foam tape from Tremco, a UV stable acrylic impregnated joint sealing tape used in construction control and expansion joints. In most instances, it is not desirable for sealant joints to adhere to three sides, as this greatly limits the movement capability of the joint. Bond breaker tape is used in joint sealing applications to prevent the adhesion of sealant in joint design. Bond breaker tape is constructed out of low surface energy backing material like polyethylene. In the diagram shown, we have on the top sealant which has been applied inside a channel, which is adhering to three sides. When stress is applied to the sealant joint, the sealant has failed and torn within itself. The example on the bottom shows sealant applied into a channel on top of a bond breaker tape. When stress is applied, the sealant can expand and contract as it has been designed to. We supply clear retention tape made from polyethylene, which can be used as a bond breaker in these types of applications. Following on from bond breaker tapes, we have barrier tapes. When we talk about barrier tapes, we are talking about tapes that are used to prevent direct contact between a sealant and a particular substrate. The reason we would want to do this would be to prevent any potential issues that could arise from incompatibility between the sealant and the substrate. The most common example of this that we come across is when faced with bitumen-based membranes in sealants, which are widely known to be incompatible with silicones and most other common sealant types. We offer an aluminum foil tape, which is a suitable product to use as a separation barrier. Remember, Unlike a bond breaker tape, in these applications, we still want the sealant to be able to adhere to the tape. Rest assured, most common sealants do exhibit strong adhesion to aluminium foil tape. Also worth a mention that pure aluminium foil tape also offers excellent thermal insulation and heat reflection properties. It is an ideal tape for sealing foil lined insulation products in fire rated areas such as firewalls. Installation and flashing tapes are pressure sensitive tapes designed for sealing around openings and penetrations in exterior walls. They are used to seal around sills, jams and heads of windows providing an added layer of protection as a waterproof barrier. We supply two types of installation flashing tape, the 8067 flashing tape from 3M and the Marshall Superstick building tape. As a key supplier of glazing and construction sealants, we've had both flashing tapes tested for compatibility and adhesion with relevant sealant products in our range. For sealing glass joints where transparency is important, such as in all glass systems, glass partitions, furniture construction, or in shower cubicles, we have a specific product called extra coal tape, or formerly known as duplicol tape. This tape is resistant to aging and UV radiation, can be used on various materials in addition to glass, such as timber, aluminium, plastic, and ceramic. We also supply a special applicator tool for this product, which is shown here, to achieve a uniform finish. The extra cold tape system offers time and cost savings compared to sealing with liquid applied sealants. In this last section, we will look at some general guidelines that should be followed when it comes to tape application. Obviously, I won't be able to detail the specific application instructions for every different product and application. However, take these as useful general guidelines to follow. Product storage. Products should be stored in its original packaging until it's ready to be used. Store product away from direct sunlight and conditions of high temperature and high humidity. Products should be used within its recommended shelf life. To achieve optimum adhesion, ensure that all bonding surfaces are clean and dry. This is very important. Cleaning solvents may be required to ensure that all contaminants like dirt, grease, wax, and oil are released and removed. Not all cleaning solutions are suitable for every substrate. We recommend carrying out spot checks first if you're not sure. Apply primer to the surface to be bonded if required. To be fair, it's not something that we really come across. I could say that I've never had to specify a primer for a tape application before. 
However, if you do come across a situation where you have a substrate and you can't find any suitable tape that will adhere to it, get in touch with us and we will help you out. The bond strength of a pressure-sensitive adhesive tape is dependent on the amount of adhesive to substrate contact developed. Applying firm pressure to the tape during application is a requirement to ensure that good bond strength is achieved. This is something uh, that's very important and shouldn't be taken for granted. Be aware of the application temperature and follow product instructions. Ensure that tension is not applied to the tape and that it is not being stretched as it is being applied, as this will weaken the bond strength of the tape. Tapes may either be applied by hand or using application tools such as pressure rollers. Ensure that any air bubbles are smoothed out. Complete adhesion may take time to develop, depending on the adhesive system used. As we've discussed earlier, in certain instances, tape will be applied for a temporary application, such as for masking or to offer temporary protection to a substrate. There are certain guidelines that should be followed when it comes time to remove the tape. Firstly, if you're using the tape in a masking application, ensure that the final coat of paint has been applied and the surface is dried before attempting to remove the tape. Similarly, if you're removing a protection film, ensure all relevant works which a tape is intended to protect from have been completed before removing the tape. Consider the air temperature when removing tape, uh, avoiding very low or very high temperatures when doing this. Removing tapes when the ambient temperature or the temperature of the substrate is very high can increase the risk of adhesive transfer, while at very cold temperatures, the tape may become more susceptible to tearing. It's generally recommended to remove tape at a 45 degree to 90 degree angle. This will assist with any residue issues and result in a cleaner edge. Remove tape slowly and steadily in a controlled motion. And finally, if you do have uh, adhesive residue remaining after removing the tape, we would recommend attempting to remove these mechanically at first, if possible. We supply plastic scraper blades that can be used for this. If that doesn't work, you could try a gentle cleaner before moving to a heavier solvent clean. Be careful when using solvents, they won't damage the surface. That brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I hope you found that informative.